Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com and uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to introduce you to a series and a series is really unusual compared to what we've done in the past. Today we're going to look at a residential property, this one here, and we're going to install some uh, um, TV mounts. You can mount the TV on the wall and we're going to put the cable behind the wall and we're going to show you some really interesting things. I think you'll uh, really enjoy this series um, and uh, thank you for watching. I'm Justin with Fish Audio and Video and I'll be helping out. The difference between a home and a, and a commercial setting is, you know, if you look at the ceiling, it's sealed. It's really hard to get cable behind these walls and it really takes not only talent but expertise to do it right. And so um, even though I've done it, I've done million dollar homes back in the 80s, it's not my forte. Uh, it takes a certain type of talent and uh, skill. But uh, it's a lot harder, you know, you got, you got the wood here, you got wood going up and down where I'm used to metal studs. Not only the wood, you're going to also have fire breaks in here. Um, that uh, if there is an internal fire in the wall, that will, that will suppress uh, the fire in the wall. And uh, it's according to code. But it doesn't mean we can't breach these little fire uh, uh, breaks in between the studs. But what it does mean is really hard to get a cable down the wall. So we're gonna show you how. And you know something, if you watch this video, and you say, well, you know, I'm in Southern California and I'd rather have someone with expertise do it. Here's the man. Call me up. So uh, the first thing I like to do is put some just tape on the wall. That way I can write on your wall and I don't have to worry about messing up your paint. If you do do this, make sure you use a soft tip marker because if you use something like a pen and you write on it, when you pull the tape off, it'll also pull off the writing you just put with that pen. So you might be upset about that. And mark the top of that to 35 and 3 eighths inches. Yeah. And that'll be the top of our TV. Yeah, so, Justin, you were telling me that uh, sometimes people put these up too high, and so they get like a neck stream looking up at them. Yeah, even though it seems like you want the TV really high in the room, you don't. You want the TV really to be in the center of your eyes. So you want to sit down on the couch and you want to have someone else come over with the tape measure. This one I would like to bring down a little bit lower, but since we have this door in the way, it's not going to work out. We're going to have to go a little bit higher than I want to. So this just is an empty box on the wall, so I just want to take it up and see what's inside of it. Um, when you do have these kind of plates, especially when my TV is going to overlap them, it'd be a nice spot for me to take advantage of. Okay, so we got all the speaker lines going to the ceiling there. We do have a coax right here already. That's a subwoofer actually. So all the audio is just stuff right here. Do we have a coax? Um, subwoofer, I don't know where the subwoofer goes to. This is just a standard fishing line. They sell them on their websites. Um, they're really nice, they're flexible, but yeah, they're strong. I'm just gonna actually fish this, this cutout that already exists, just to see what kind of uh, obstructions I have in the way. If there's a fire block in the way, or if it's a nice, clean, straight run. And so we got a fire block right there. So I'll just grab it, pull it out, and go up and see the distance on that. So we're right there. Get my Sharpie there. I let myself know I got a fire lock right here. And that is going to be behind where the TV is going to lay. So, so I'm okay to, rather than try to drill up from this direction, I'm going to put my cut in box right up here. And then I could use a small drill bit to drill through that fire block. And that's going to save me a lot of time. Rather than having to take a huge drill bit. I'm trying to bend it all weird up there. <clears throat> Here's the part that just slides on there. See here. Should be. So this is what you'd call a tilt mount. It's not fixed in one position. This is the mount I'd, I'd prefer everyone got. Some people like the look of it just being solid flat on the wall. But you don't want that. You want for one, just to get the glare, because your ceiling has lights and stuff. If you're flat on the wall, it's going to get glare. So you want to get at least a little bit of a tilt. So this mount's going to allow me to tilt it down just as much as I want to. So, 
kill these. <clears throat> these guys right here. And we'll go on the sides here to make sure we can uh, actually tilt it. So we'll lock those in place. I like to make them pretty tight right off the get-go. Um, this TV is going to be pretty heavy and it, it's it's going to, even though it feels like it's really strong right now, once that weight's on there it's going to be a little different. So make it pretty tight. You can always touch the front of the TV after you hang it and kind of bend it down a little bit if you need to. But uh, that should hold it pretty well. I'll just loosen it just a tiny bit. Right there. Okay. Make sure that when you buy an arm mount that you don't just get any arm mount. You don't want to go for the one that fits your TV and has the cheapest price point. You've got to look at how far it comes off the wall. We see it every day people buy arm mounts and they'll put on a 60 inch TV with a 12 inch, you know, it comes off the wall 12 inches and it does nothing on a big TV like that. It just barely moves. So a TV like this, you need to measure half the TV and that's how much length you want off the wall at least. So on something like this, You'd be looking at 27 inches for your articulating arm mount. I'm going to go ahead and put these on the back of the TV now. Uh, you know the hook's going to go on the top part because that's when you actually bring the TV to hang it on the wall. That hook's going to go on the top of the mount. Here, I'm going to grab the mount here to kind of demonstrate that. So here's the bracket that's actually going to go on the wall. And this one's nice. It has a little level already built in, so it's kind of nice when you hang it on the wall. And then this is going to mount at the back of the TV. And these little hooks, when you go hang it, and they hang on the top of the TV and drop down. And then you'll just uh, <clears throat> untwist this. I like to do it before it. And they're just little locks. That once it goes on there, a little stiff there. There we go. They'll go behind and you could twist them to lock it in. Also, another thing to think about before you actually hook these on, make sure that when you hook them on, you hook them with the little, the, the, the tightening knob here on the outside, so you can actually reach in with your arm and change it if you do need to tilt it, and it won't tilt because it's too tight, or it's too loose and it's just falling down, uh, you want to get back there, so. We have that cut in box on the bottom, so we want these hooks to be as high as we possibly can on the back of the TV, because we want that top bracket to be pretty high on the wall, or as high as we can go. So we're going to go ahead and hang this on the bottom one here. So the first one I'm going to go pretty loose just to make sure I, I get the right place on it. And then, because um, it looks like, let's see here. We're actually going to have to go lower on this to get to that first hole. And we want to leave this on the mount as long as we possibly can just to make it easier for us to work on it. I'm going to go ahead and just slide this on the back here, just for measurement reasons and nothing else. I'm going to put it on here, I'm going to clamp it in, screw that in so it doesn't fall off onto the nice uh, floor, and then we'll measure off at the top of the TV here. So from the top of the TV to the first hole, we've got 11 inches right to the center of it. So I'm going to take that and go to over here, and I already marked where the top of the TV is going to be, off of the top of that frame. Let's go 11 inches down on that. It is right here. And remember, if you do tilt it down a little bit, that's going to change probably about a half inch. So something to think about if you really, really want it precise. Most people don't really care that much. So let's see, hot bolts. You know what's nice too is I never thought about using painter's tape that comes off the wall nice and easy, mm -hmm. doesn't pull the tape off it and and you can you know you're you're doing the planning. You're just not cutting holes in the wall, you're actually thinking it through and doing the planning. Yeah, exactly. And I get to plan it on the wall rather than on a piece of paper. It makes it so much easier to look at it. And plus, you know, at the end of this we typically have the client come in and say, Okay, well this is the top of the TV, this is the bottom, here's this, what's that look like to you? Is that okay before I cut holes in your drywall? So when we do hook this up, 
I know that all these mounts come with a lot of play. I mean, on this one we have um, 15 inches of extra play. So you want to be as close to center as possible on this thing, but really you've got 15 inches to move left or right. So even though we told the client it's going to be 10 inches off that, if they want it more closer to 5 inches, that's easy. Or if they want it more like 15, that's easy as well. We could still move all those directions. Be kind of center here. We'll be at the 11 inch mark. And that one's magnetic, so I can just slap it up there. So, but it looks like that level is exactly the same as the other one. So I'll put a mark right there, and mark right here. Perfect. Pull that down. I'm going to leave that for the fire block though. And I could go ahead and get rid of this tape too. There we go. Okay, nice clean wall. So I'm going to pre-drill the um, the holes we're going into. Uh, here's the bolt size. I want to get a bit that's just a little bit smaller than it. In fact, quite a bit smaller than it. But you do always want to pre-drill it. It will keep the uh, stud from cracking open and stuff. So this will. This is a pretty fast and easy way to. You don't have a drill bit, or you don't have a stud. You might be, you might be going into something you shouldn't be going into. And then if you come out slow, you can also see the uh, the wood tread coming off there. So, so we know we're good. We know we hit a stud. And I'll do the same for this one. The first bullet you pulled in uh, doesn't really matter if it's a level. You just want to get. Something on there, just kind of hold it and restrain. Now that I'm solid and and uh, level, I'll go ahead and tighten up my bolts really nice. Guess as level as possible. Unless you don't know what's on the other side of the wall, and you never want to use big power tools to cut through walls because you might hit a uh, Romex or something like that. But something like this it takes a little more time, a little bit tougher, but uh, you can feel what's on the other side of the wall. So. I'm going to go and fish through all those HDMI cords. Usually a little easier. There we go. down here, I can see it already. So, go ahead and push it up a little bit so I can get the bottom of it through. There we go. So I'm just gonna wrap all those in um, electric tape and I'm gonna tape them onto my fishing line. Make sure they're all going in line so it basically becomes one. Real easy to do. Um, and then uh, make sure you stagger them. You don't want one giant bulkhead up here. Because even though it's a small pool, there's still a lot of things to get caught up on. And there's a lot of stuff going on in here that we don't really know what's going on. This speaker line could be stapled across like this. It could be a lot of things. So um, we want to make it as sleek as possible. Uh, if you do try to pull it and it gets stuck and you're just not going anywhere, pull it back and, uh, and put something to kind of lubricate it a little bit. Maybe a little kitchen soap or something like that would do the trick. Always leave little plastic tips on there until you're actually ready to install. That way you don't get all the drywall in those. And just leave them clean. Left twist it on the side there and easily take that off. Yes, right. saves a lot of time. The nice thing about this box is it's really flexible. You know, there are places where you can tie wrap things. There's little tie wrap hooks there uh, so they don't fall through when you let them go. They, uh, it's self-mounting. I know you're, that's what you're pulling in now, the ears. Yeah, the little ears. And they work fantastic. It's yeah, you, and then you have those little 
clips there, so if you have extra cable, you can actually just wrap it around those extra clips. And everything's flush then against the wall. It looks nice and neat. In this case, uh, people coming down the steps to the left will be able to see behind the TV, so everything that's kept nice and neat is, is really the way to go. Oh, what I should have shown you is that these little ears here, when you start screwing them, mm -hmm. they're gonna fold up behind the drywall. Those are the ones that have a little butterfly on them that opens up. So we'll push them in nice and tight. And now we can go ahead and... We're gonna go ahead and put a nice face plate for all these to go into and feed through. If you're on a budget, you don't have to do that. You could do a nice, like a nose plate, something that has a small hole in it. And run it directly to the TV and go with longer HDMI cords. But uh, this client wanted it to look really nice, have a nice clean look. So we're gonna use these, um, Push it forward and there you go. So we have four HDMI's, so we'll put four of these. There we go. Now for the coax, I'm gonna go and screw that thing in first before I put it in. It's gonna make my life a little easier. In there, pops in really nice. And then for the Cat5, we'll just go ahead and do a Punch down for that real quick. All right, so now we'll go ahead and feed these through. You could have labeled these ahead of time if you wanted to, um, but it's pretty easy to figure out which one's which once you just start putting some videos into it. All right, there we go. There we go. I want to make sure all those are nice and snug. I don't want to have to take this apart in 10 minutes and see which one didn't go in correctly. Uh, so this power cord is excessively long, and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap it in, in this nice little, uh, I don't know what you call it, two bars I guess they put inside the box here for us, and uh, that's going to look really nice. I think I'm going to take a piece of Velcro or a zip tie, just to fit it up and make it really nice in front. So, and our power cord is about right here, so we're looking good right there. So what I want to do is uh, lift it up so the little hooks go over the top. You got it? Yeah. You can go up an inch higher. There you go. And on the bottom. That's it. So uh, once those hooks are in, you're really good to go. You like that, you're totally fine. We secured it pretty good. And then uh, don't screw in the bottom screws yet. You could always lift it up quite a bit. And it gives you plenty of play to find everything. Hook it all up. Just looked at this a second ago. Now that it's up here, nice and clean, we, we do have it on the tilt mount, so it's tilted down just a little bit. Um, we have huge lights in this room that are really hot, um, but they're putting a ton of glare on it. Typically you have lights on the ceiling, and the reason I like a tilt mount is, well for one, I want it kind of facing down on you, but <laughs> second of all, it's going to reduce the glare. And um, I know a lot of people want to be nice and square and flat, and it does look nicer, especially when it's off. but. Um, but it doesn't get rid of any glare. So, especially if you're gonna buy a cheaper TV, if you want a totally flat TV, I would highly recommend going with the most expensive TV. Go with something that has a lot of glare resistance. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David, signing out. You stay classy, Internet. <laughs>